So as you can see at the bottom of my garden, I've got a converted shed that initially it lived there and it was rotting away. And when I moved in this house, I thought, hmm, I could make an observatory out of that like I did in my last house. So I moved it, built a pier, base, replaced a lot of the wood, just did it really on the cheap, relatively speaking. There's no such thing as really cheap observatory conversion. Um, but the thing is, I've not used it in over a year now, and I've been contemplating reinstating it. And I'm leaning towards not doing that. So I wanted to make a video to sort of basically highlight why, if you're thinking of building an observatory, why it's not always a good idea, depending on your circumstances. Just because it's a lot of work and money to do it, this might help people sort of consolidate whether it's for them or whether to stick with setting up a rig outside on their grass. Right, so first of all, I'm gonna point out two mistakes I made with this. I mean, as mentioned, I did it really on the cheap. So this is partly the reason for this. So the first mistake was, you can go and have a look inside. I just used any tube I could immediately find in the space of a week to build my pier. This is the initial tube. This is a, a dog, um, a pet blanket, heating blanket that I used to keep dew off my stuff that was set, set up in here. But the pier is really narrow there. It's like five inches or something. I did put an oversleeve on it and fill it with concrete to make it wider. And I'd say this sort of eight inch kind of pipe, eight, nine inch, whatever it is, is about the minimum really I'd go for to make sure it's strong enough and it gets rid of the vibrations. So don't cut corners. I knew that I knew there'd probably be problems when I was cutting corners doing this, but I still, for some reason, just did it anyway. Learn from my mistake there. Go for a wider tube if you're gonna do the filling, a tube of concrete approach and rebar approach to building a pier for an observatory or breeze blocks. I've, I've seen a lot of good piers made out of breeze blocks. Uh, all stacked together, uh, they work really well. I'd probably do that in hindsight actually, rather than going with the tube and the concrete. The other thing is you might be able to see how much my roof is burrowing down. And this is despite, you know, reinforcing it all and putting metal across it and all sorts. Um, it's just basically what happens is if it just if it's flat you get water that sits on it it just kind of also the roof weighs a lot so it's bowing down under its own weight and then the water adds to that the more it bows the more water it collects oh ooh, sugar so i'm just destroying my telescopes while i'm making this video just caught the eyepiece extension tube gotta be careful in here it's not a big observatory where was i yeah so if i jump up and down you might be able to see how much it's bowing down and that when it's raining it forms a nice little bird bath there which actually brings me on to another point this is basically a bird entertainment system birds like to perch on there they like to drink from my dip down observatory roof and it makes a beautiful home especially for the pigeons which then go and leave me presents outside the door quite often so yeah <laughs> If you, if you don't want a lot of pigeons in your garden, then don't do a flat roof on your observatory that will turn into a bird bath and attract pigeons and whatnot. What I'd recommend is to build a pitch roof, which isn't gonna bow because triangles are strong and the water will roll off. So, so that's that, that's two things I'd, I'd recommend if you are going to build an observatory Make sure you've got a wide enough pair. Consider doing breeze blocks. I just think that's easier in hindsight. And go for a pitch roof. Because the flat ones, unless you're putting some serious beams in, which would be really heavy, it's going to bow down and sag. Now, why have I decided more likely that I'm not going to reinstate this? Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. 
uh, probably the most important one is that even though I feel that I've placed this in the best place on my plot of land that I've got here, it still means I can't see a lot of targets. Unlike a portable setup that I can move around to the front of the house, to the back or whatever, move over here to get a gap over there, or, you know, just whatever. You're really fixed to a, a pier and looking over the edge of your observatory. I mean, quite often I'd roll this roof over and I'd be trying to get a Ryan over there and I just couldn't get an angle at it. And this was, so, I found this to be the case so many times that I'd have a rig set up here, couldn't reach a target. And I was like, well, I'll image something I can reach. And it wasn't really the target I was going for. So this is really playing in my mind when I, when it comes to reinstating this observatory, I'm thinking, well, is it really worth it when I can just have a mobile rig and reach twice as many targets by moving it around? And secondly, the main, the main benefit of having an observatory, is, as many will know, is that you're, you can set everything up on the pier and it's already polar aligned, so you don't need to bother with polar alignment. But I think that's more of a really do think nowadays that's more of a benefit if you're in the southern hemisphere i mean it's pretty it's relatively easy to polar align now to polaris um i mean there's plate solving with nina the asi air you can use um ipolar by optron and you can use something like the star sense system by celestron there's just lots of different ways to automate polar alignment and make it easier and more precise so I don't think that takes up too much time from setting up. The other thing is, the other benefit of having an observatory is you can put a really big ass telescope and mount in there, which would be really inconvenient to do if you're dragging it out and set, setting it up each night. Oh, big goldfish came to the surface then. Sorry, bit of an ADHD moment got distracted. Right. So where was I? Yeah. So if you're if you're um, got a big rig to set up every night, I can really really see why you'd want to build an observatory, because it's going to save you back. You're not going to accidentally like drop it in the dark and break it. It's all just set up nice and safe. The thing is though, if you live at sea level in places like England, <laughs> um, how can I put this? The atmosphere is pretty crap. Um, we sat underneath the jet stream and there's a big, nice thick air slab because we're not at any kind of high altitude to cut through some of it. And that really limits us for long exposures in terms of resolution. We can only get down to about 0.8 arc seconds. And that can be achieved with fine resolution cameras and smaller optics. So I, 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 I firmly believe if you're at sea level and you've got crap seeing and you're taking long exposures for deep sky, as much as I'd like to get a really big, massive, like 12 inch RC or something, I just don't think it would be practical or I don't think you'd see an enormous amount of benefit over an 8-inch. I think 8-inch is probably the, the upper limit to being practical because of the limitations of the seeing conditions for long exposure imaging. Now, if you're doing planetary and lunar, where you're doing this lucky imaging technique where you're filming the planet and the moon and you're taking video files with very short individual exposures, all together, it's taken thousands of them, then you can just obviously load those into software, pick out the sharpest ones from where the atmosphere is, just stopped for a moment and remained still. So you've got, occasionally you'll see a sharp frame amongst all these blurry ones, and you can stack them, and you can get down to about 0.2 arc seconds with that method. So there's a lot more point in going bigger aperture which is why you see all the best pictures of planets from things like C, C11s and C14s and great big classical Cassegrains and big Newtonians. But deep sky long exposure, 
eight inch is i think that's the upper limit really for back garden um sea level under crap skies imaging for long exposures and you can basically you know you can get really good results really good resolution with something like a four inch refractor on an eq mount it's going to get you good resolution on most targets because we're i mean you can always punch in to increase image scale and there is a limit what we can do unless you're living at the top of a mountain then in which case definitely get a, a big observatory massive telescope and live your best life with that from a garden like this i think there's a strong argument for just taking out a portable rig imaging at one arc second resolution which is about the practical limit most nights you can sometimes duck below that and then not have to worry about imaging at super long focal lengths with big apertures and not actually getting the results that should give because of the atmosphere anyway what have i missed i'm sure i've missed something this is the only problem when you just basically pick up a camera and have a rant it's not scripted or anything and you miss things but yeah i think that's probably it um so yeah things to consider when you're deciding to build an observatory catch you on the next one